He got a medal in the junior school as a boxing champion. He went into, he went into um, uh, long distance running and um, uh, he even dabbled in tennis where one of his partner was nobody else than Ramathan, Ramanathan Krishnan who became, I think, a Wimbledon champion at some stage. And in his first encounter with Raman Subhan, Raman Subhan is defeated by him. And then Raman Subhan has the cheek to say that I actually launched him in his career because if I had defeated him, he would have never gone to become such a famous <laughs> man. <laughs> he spent his uh, uh, most formative years in the, in the school, in, in a boarding school, St. Paul's, uh, between 1942 and 49. 1942 and 50. When there was a world war being fought, India was partitioned and he spent, unlike other colleagues of his, reading the statesman, but alas, only the sports page. <laughs> <laughs> this is the side, I mean, the, the, the view of Raman Subhan who will have never come to. The memoir is a beautifully written book. So easy to read, unlike many of <laughs> Sir's article in economics. <laughs> so here we are with the man, his ideas, his life, and the story he has to tell. Now, Sir, um, one of the most powerful part of this book is his preface. And um, let me just read a part of it which actually intrigues you to go go on. He said that uh, I had decided to work only in uh, no sorry this is not it. That no the why he decides to be in Dhaka he makes that I thus chose to make my home in Dhaka not out of any compulsions of circumstances birth or ancestral inheritance, but as an ideological decision to proclaim myself as a Bengali. <laughs> Sir, why did you decide to proclaim yourself as a Bengali? <laughs> uh, well, it's not an easy question. I think uh, this was a decision I took when I was at Cambridge where I moved into the political and politicized phase of my life. And at that time I found that uh, as a Pakistani, uh, when we were campaigning for democracy in Pakistan, uh, the natural constituency with which I could easily identify was uh, uh, the then East Pakistan. It was the Bengalis who were the vanguard of the democratic movement. Uh, they had won the famous 1954 election through the Jukto Front, which had then been usurped by the declaration of Section 92A. And so therefore, any engagement with the politics of Pakistan, one wanted to identify with the area where I would feel most comfortable. And of course, uh, Bangla East Bengal, now Bangladesh, in fact, appeared the natural place for me to go. It was not that I was unrelated to Bengal. I had a family connection to it, but not of the right political antecedents. <laughs> and my father was a Bengali, though he was from West Bengal. Uh, but Bangladesh became my natural home. Kamal was already based over there. That was his home. And this was the place I thought I would fulfill whatever political aspirations I might have. Another paragraph from his uh, preface, he says, the central theme of my story is intended to, ex intended to explain why and how, under what circumstances, the great-grandson of Noab Asanullah, the son of a police officer who was once contemporary of Field Marshal Ayub Khan in Sandhurst, would on 27th March, have his home in Dhaka invaded by an officer of his troops from Pakistan army with orders to take him into custody on charges of high treason to the state of Pakistan. Now, sir, 
you enlightened us a bit, Dr. Kamal Hussain, you have been his lifelong friend. His transition <laughs> from, you know, the tranquil and, and, and uh, in a way, uh, sort of happy-go-lucky young man who becomes uh, the enemy of the state of Pakistan. Mike. 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 You made the first point then, about his choices. The sentence I picked out from page 28 was, the subsequent story of my life will elaborate on this journey I made from my family inheritance to a life shaped through my own choices. Now, this is a point you've also noted, that how from a British product of a British public school during the British period, with boxing and the marathon running and so on, to the next stage which was in the Chiefs College on, in Lahore to Cambridge. From there to emerge in 61, as the person says, Pakistan has two economies. To have Ayub Khan on the next day say, no, Pakistan has one economy. So the whole debate then is, are you field marshal Ayub Khan on one side, and in 1961, a young teacher in Dhaka University sharing guidelines. So that shows how he, his sensitivity to what he saw and the judgment that he could make. And basically, he has been on the side of justice all his life as I've known.